is a political commentator. <coughs> Kevin Osido is a governance expert. Joseph Kiyoko is a public policy expert. And uh, Richard Tuta is a security expert. Um, joined here by a panel of experts in various fields. <laughs> and I believe we will be able to exhaust some of the topics we have lined up. Gentlemen, always a pleasure to have you here on Kivumbi 2017. Now, just to start from where William Lusige has left from, the Machakos County politics. The first governor has been sworn in and... Um, well, Vinyandetti says she is going to court regardless, says they have facts and they believe they will have a strong case once they take it to the court. I want to start with the governance expert. You have been tracking the performance of most of these governors um, in the first uh, devolved system we had after the constitution. What do we expect to see in the coming one before we get to now the politics of Wavinya and, and uh, Mutua? Yeah, indeed, uh, Akisa, and you note that uh, the speaker there has just indicated that uh, the, the populace is interested in services and has been very categorical in so far as what service delivery means to them and he said that people actually are in need of water and all over the country people are, are in dire need of service delivery and that is what Kenyans are really interested in so that you're able to have water, you're able to have food, you're able to have uh, health, you're able to have mm -hmm. education and that is indeed what in my view governance, leadership and politics should be able to mean in the lives of the citizens. Mm -hmm. yeah. Being the first uh, devolved governments we had uh, stories of oh, I did not perform because this was a new concept, no one really knew what to do as a governor. What do we expect with this second batch of governors now? Uh, in my view, we expect a lot of uh, citizen agility. We expect lots of, of accountability because now the citizens have been able to look at, look at and understand the roles of, of counties, including the elected officials mm -hmm. for the counties. And that also means that even those governors that are coming into the second generation of devolved governance need to actually understand uh, the populace and look at how people voted. People were excited and uh, IBC gave uh, Kenyans an opportunity to be able to engage with their, with their leaders. The platforms were very well set at and, and so this is indeed a standard platform for the citizens to be able to look at what are we in need of in our county or in our country and how can we be able to work with the elected leaders yeah. to be able to ensure that, those, that our needs are actually met. Joseph, in terms of policies, um, um, drawing from some of the experiences that Kenyans have had with the fast devolved systems, what sector do you think is very much lacking as far as devolution is concerned? Uh, first, before I, I, I go back to that, I think it's incumbent on us to congratulate Alfred Mutua. Mm -hmm. He is a governor of many firsts. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I mean, yeah, he, he, the first, the, the first yeah. one to be sworn yes. in, the first governor to do a road which mm -hmm. had never been done elsewhere, and the first governor also one of the governors that defied a political wave in the region that it comes from Kiko, and where I come from. No, I'm from Makueni. <laughs> our county has different <laughs> challenges. He's a neighbor. He's a yeah. neighbor. Our, chale our county has different challenges. But there, there's a, what Mutua did is that he was able to move the level of discourse, political discourse in Machakos, from mere rhetorics, party issues, mm -hmm. to a policy orientation, to a development uh, oriented uh, agenda. So I wish him well. Uh, and again, he's the first governor to be sown in, mm -hmm. even as others are dealing with issues. He's the first governor to be sown in, even when somebody else is challenging his election. He, he, he has a tendency of moving very fast. Mm -hmm. and, and people of Machakos have rewarded him by another time. But generally, in terms of uh, the new challenges that county governments will face, the question of health needs to be addressed squarely. I feel it is wrong for somebody to agitate that health needs to be removed from county governments and back to national government. These doctors have been trained at K uh, KNH. Majority of our Kenyan doctors, before the Moy University Dental School, I mean the health school came in, before the Aga Khan Health School came in, medical school came in. All these doctors, 30, 40 or 70 percent of our medical doctors have been trained from Kenyatta National Hospital, from Nairobi School of Medicine. And they have been running their private clinics at the county level. The question is not to reinstate or to return health services to the national government. Mm -hmm. The question is to strengthen accountability and performance-based issues with the health, uh, with the doctors at the county level. Yeah. I think that issue needs to be addressed conclusively. Matters of social accountability mm -hmm. needs to come to the center. Uh, what we did in 2013 was to create 47 devolved units, mm -hmm. not to devolve corruption into this area. The first governors suffered those challenges of creating 47 dens of uh, corruption. Yeah. Social accountability needs to move from Nairobi, yes. Nairobi is the center. Nairobi controls 85% of our resource base. Mm -hmm. The 15% that goes to the county, we need to be vigilant. Uh, our civil society now needs to move 
into the county government the so that we can focus on creating accountability, especially social accountability within the county. That way we fight corruption. Uh, that's a big challenge. Then ultimately, we as a country need to appreciate that when resources are devolved and with proper working mechanism, then our economies might grow. We might even address the old age issues of inequality. We need to fight for more resources to go. The bare minimum of 50 needs to be challenged. We need to move to a position where about 30 to 40 percent of our national resources mm -hmm. are taken to the county. Let's empower the county government. Let's get good leadership. And yeah. I know our country will develop better. Richard, for you, what needs to improve in the counties with this second batch of governors? I, I, I think one thing that will come out clearly from across all the counties, you talk to any governor, he will always tell you that we don't have enough resources. So the question has always been, what is this enough resources or lack of it? Yeah. You go to any county, they will tell you, look, this is what we got and these are our needs. I think where the whole problem lies is how they are able to prioritize the little resources that they have. Because if you cannot account for the little that you have, even if you are given more, you will not account for it. One thing that I'm happy about uh, Governor Alfred Mutua is that he has always been, even in the previous, uh, previous regime, he has always been a pace setter for all the other county governors. He has, always been the, uh, he has always been the one who sets the agenda for all the other county governors. I don't know whether those who will come in if they will be able to keep up with their pace. Well, critics have pegged that on um, Whether very, real or imagined. very, very nice <laughs> public relations. Yes. Whether real yeah. or imagined, he has always set pace for all other counties. Remember, that because of <laughs> Governor Alfred Mutua, maybe that's why so many of them have gone home. Mm -hmm. Because you go to every county, the residents will tell you, why are you not performing like Governor Alfred Mutua? Mm -hmm. So he is the reason as to why. Most okay. of the governors are at home. And I think those who will be coming in for the first time need to go to him for afternoon classes. <laughs> but, 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 but that one you yes. said real or perceived. Mm -hmm. I think the people of Machakos made a statement mm -hmm. that what Mutu has been doing is real. The, the people in Nairobi and other parts uh, uh, get caught up with, mm -hmm. the, with, the, with social media platform. What Mutu is doing is not correct. But the final voice was the people of Machakos. And they've told us that what Mutua is doing mm. has substance. Now, you PR experts, you can deal with the rest. But Mutua has shown you a substance. Well, those going to court, mm. do, don't, of course, don't think uh, like remember, you, no, no, but let's hear from Prof. Akisa, <laughs> Akisa, everybody has got a right to opinion. Yes. Mm. What they don't have is a right to be taken seriously. Mm. Oh. So, <laughs> <laughs> That's really a new one. Prof, your analysis of how the 47 county governments have performed mm. the first batch since um, the promulgation of the constitution and now what do we expect with these new ones or those who have retained their seats? Thank you Akisa. First and foremost the, the first batch of governors were really guinea pigs. They were, they were experimenting uh, along a path that had not been trodden before. Mm -hmm. So the prime requirement when you are in an experimental situation is uh, first of all sanity two, uh, stability, and three, creativity. You need those ones to be able to do the right thing. Now, uh, unfortunately, a large batch of them were people that had cut their teeth at the national government. So uh, what they did, they went down and created mini, um, um, mini governments which were prototypes of the national, of the national, government. national government. Inevitably, they dragged along the bad habits of nepotism, they dragged along the bad habits of corruption, they dragged along the bad habits of uh, impunity and things like that. But generally speaking, in my view, uh, if we consider that 50% uh, of those governors and more survived, it means that they did a reasonable job, but because there was really no standard when they got into business. Yeah. So now you, you could say from an experimental perspective, yeah. they did not do too badly. Mm -hmm. They were simply victims of inherent you know, infection mm. from broadband from national, from level. national level. Two, I, have, I appreciate my colleagues' comments about Governor Mutua. Uh, 
I want to say that among the four of us, I'm the only one who lives in uh, Machakos County. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, so you are a voter. You are a voter there. Yes, I'm a voter <laughs> in Machakos County. Now, um, my experience being a resident there is this. Um, Mutua has attempted to prioritize um, the things that are important to the Machakos people. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one has been water. The second one has been uh, infrastructure. And um, the third one has been miscellaneous. You know, those two have been at the forefront. Mm -hmm. Then the rest have ridden on those two. Mm -hmm. Now, broadly speaking, Governor Mutua has done well. Um, but generally speaking, how well he has done is embellished, is decorated by his PR expertise. Mm -hmm. All right? Even when he makes a, a, a road that survives just 12 months, mm -hmm. but is photographed as having tarmac, he describes the achievement in such a way that it comes out, uh, it leaves an, an indelible mark. Mm -hmm. It has an impact. So here you are looking at an individual who um, uh, tries very hard to succeed, but also succeeds wonderfully in concealing failure. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> he really succeeds. In, for example, I can tell you, he came over to Siokimau and assured us that in three weeks, the roads would have maram all over. Do they have maram now? So what happened? Two roads got maram, all right? The rest, the maram was there, was left there until the elections were finished. Now, uh, secondly, uh, that's what I'm saying. On a performance mm. is average. On a PR is excellent. Mm. I want to say something else in addition to the governors and the devolution in general. If you look at the results of the elections of the MCAs, 70% were sent home across the country, mm -hmm. a bit more in others. Mm -hmm. In some, 90% were sent home. What it tells you is that the crop that came in, broadly speaking, apparently uh, spent their time in uh, self-aggrandizement. Mm -hmm. A lot of them uh, never knew the world. In fact, I like to tell the audience that one MCA went on a benchmarking mission to Botswana from my uh, home district. When he came back, he came to Nairobi, he called me, and he, he gave me a lecture on how exciting it is to be on a plane. Mm -hmm. And he spent one hour just <laughs> describing <laughs> about takeoff and cruising and how you see things in the air. And he said, God is nice to me because I've been able to take but a plane ride. The, the argument we, has been, uh, yeah, Prof, yeah. Uh, sorry to cut you short, the yeah. argument has been that Governor Mtua is seen to be doing one, or, one two or three things. That's this was what this I, PR that's what that I has said. been. But now the argument has been at least he has done something. There are governors somewhere who've done absolutely nothing. Thank you. I actually said he has done yeah. something. Uh -huh. um, what he has performed does not smack of brilliance. It's max of average ice with an icing on the cake to make it look brilliant. That's my assessment. Uh, and and uh, of course, uh, look, given the work that we do with counties, mm -hmm. uh, these counties are unique in their own forms and manners. And Machakos is lucky because of one, its proximity, and of course, the infrastructure. If you, ride, if you were to run between, let me say, across Machakos from Nairobi mm -hmm. all the way to Kitui, and then you go all the way to McQueen, you can be able to see lots of difference insofar as infrastructure is concerned mm -hmm. and even the manner in which opportunities for the people to be able to participate effectively. Yeah. So yes, Machakos County could be doing well in some of the things that uh, as, as all of us are saying, but giving credence to the publicity of the governor, that is one. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the governance uh, indices, like for instance, we have what we call the county governance index. Machakos to us does not really spar very mm -hmm. highly. In fact, it's not even uh, up to number four. Yeah. It actually ranks as number six in our, in our index. But if you go to northeastern Kenya, you look at counties like Mandera, Marsabit, counties that can be able to showcase. For instance, we had the first uh, CS section being done in, uh, in northeastern mm -hmm. Kenya. 
in the total life of the of the lifespan of the country mm -hmm. and this was auspices of of, of devolution so Looking at one county to be able to use it to gauge or rank all the 46 others might be tricky for us because these counties, even if you look at the, the revenue allocation, yeah. and CRA has a formula of doing this, yes. which, which then presents lots of other uh, complexities, which I don't think might form the standard base in so far as um, gauging counties is, con is, mm -hmm. is concerned. But again, Akisa, you, you look at governance and leadership, and a leader can only be as good as the leadership and the team that mm -hmm. you work with. Mm -hmm. And so probably what uh, Governor Mutua has been able to do is to assemble a team that can be able to deliver. But all the other counties also have teams, and that is why you have uh, chief officers of yeah. ministries, you have heads of departments, you have, uh, you have uh, of course, officers working under, under the people who lead the teams. What this therefore means, in my view, is that as we move on to the second generation of devolved governance, or rather devolution, people need to learn from the gaps that we have noted or that we missed in right from 2013 to 2017, no, yeah. and then use now the infilling of the processes, like the teams that, that, that we are now bringing into office, to be able to look at the expertise and mm -hmm. what they bring on insofar as value addition for the county to actually just deliver services to the people. And I would not peg that to probably allocation or any other thing because every governor knows the formula for revenue allocation. Every governor has what is called the CIDP and right now we are undergoing the review of the county integrated mm -hmm. development plans. Don't plan for what you know that your people don't need. Plan for what you think is a priority and we also have through the County Governments Act 2012 that presents platforms for the citizens to be able to engage with mm -hmm. their with their leaders at the county level. And part of this process is what we call the Public Participation uh, Act. Machakos County does not even have an act, though many other counties have drafts. So what we are saying, therefore, is that we need to look at what we are doing vis-a-vis -vis already established uh, frameworks and what value those frameworks can be able to add insofar yeah. as our okay. delivery is concerned. But do we expect those who have retained their seats uh, to perform better than the newcomers owing to the fact that they now have experience? Uh, I, I, I tend to, to depart a bit from what Osindo has said. Yeah. Uh, one is that the point of departure between politics and religion is that in politics the end justifies the means. Mm -hmm. And in religion, as much as you have the end, people will still ask you of how you arrived at the end. Mm -hmm. Looking at uh, what Osindo has said about uh, Dr. Alfred Mutua, he may not have all those details, but Machako's people have spoken. Maybe Machako's people don't want the, all those details as far as public participation yes, is concerned. Right. Because those to the people of Machako's are theoretical thinking. Then they just want to see water. They just want to see good roads. How th it was arrived at those good roads, they don't want to be taken mm -hmm. to those details. But and you know, that, uh... there is a Swahili says that ukista jabu akulacho nyuki <laughs> so they don't, they don't <laughs> want to go that direction. No, there is this governors who have come in for the first, who have extended their tenure. Yeah. One is that they are sitting pretty fast. Is that they have won, regardless of what was being said about them. They may continue with their policies, but what is important to most of them now Remember, this is their last term. Mm -hmm. There is no one who will go into the Constitution and maybe make an amendment so that so and so yeah. can proceed. Okay. This is their last term. As All much right. as the president wants to leave a legacy, most of these governors now, mm -hmm. what they want to leave behind them is a legacy. And most of them now will be working towards leaving that legacy. All right. Just... Do we expect too much from the citizenry as far as policies that are in place and the procedures in the county levels? Is, is it not time that citizens were alive to the fact um, that it is their accountability that would make how accountable, um, the amount of accountability they ask of their leaders is, is what will determine how much work they will do, Joseph? I think you, you, the citizens expect more, mm -hmm. truly more, and, and that's not a fault. But, but the, the challenge comes in is when the leadership takes them for a ride. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've, I've liked what uh, my friend Richard has said here, that in Machakos there might be no systems, there might be no institutions, there might be no public participation. But the people know the problems, they want a solution to yeah. that problem. Whoever offers them that solution, is Jesus, is Joshua. He'll take them to Canaan. Mm. <laughs> and their Canaan is just that small <laughs> arena that we're talking about. And, and, and oh it is incumbent on the people who've been re-elected now to look back and say, 
in the next five years, we will not be here. Yeah. What if people elect another erratic leader? What will happen to this county that we've gotten here? There is need to invest in institutions. There is need to invest in procedures. There is need to invest in, in a governance structure that makes sense and which lives in perpetuity. Okay. I, I think that's a fundamental issue. Right. The second challenge that mm -hmm. we're facing now is the question of these governors who've lost, where are they going? You, you, is, has he become an ex-mayor? Yeah. Yeah. Do we have a pension plan for him? And that is a conversation I would like us to get into just after the business Fair news. Mm. So we're getting back to those who have lost. What next, next? Uh, for them? And uh, remember, my colleague Abi Agina will just be joining us in a bit to give us the latest in the world of business before we get back to this conversation here with my panelists on the change of guard. Uh, but uh, Abi is joining us uh, from our business studio. Abi, what do you have for our viewers? Well, many thanks, Akisa, there.